So wait a um, So this audio lesson will be on participles. Um, this is from Ecce Romani Book Three, Chapter Fifty Five, before exercises uh, A and B of that chapter. However, it will uh, work for anybody who wants to just go through and review participles in Latin. So there are three main types of participles in Latin. There's the present participle, the ens entis type, like amans, amantis, loving. There's the fourth principal part, which is uh, the perfect passive participle, PPP. Uh, and so, for example, victus meaning conquered, amatus meaning love, doctus meaning taught or having been taught. Uh, and that one, again, it's the, it equals kind of the past participle or having been verbed in English. Then the last uh, normal type of participle in Latin would be the future active participle, uh, the one that ends in urus. You take the fourth principle part, you drop off the us or um ending from that fourth part, and you turn that into urus, and of course the endings will change there. Uh, so the ur is the key thing that will help you recognize the future participle. So uh, this review is all about how do you how do you view these how, how are they to be understood how are they to be translated when you are changing the Latin into English. So let's just take a look here. Um, first, the present participle. So they give us an example: Caesar rediens ex Gallia, victor, quipit poscre alterum consulatum. Caesar returning from Gaul. Rediens ex Gallia. So that's a literal translation of the part, um, participle. Rediens is returning, going back, coming from redeo. So going back, returning from Gaul, a victor, he began to demand another consulship. Now, they give us some alternatives because what they want us to understand is that participles are very, very common in Latin. They use them all the time, and in fact, they use them so frequently that a lot of the times when they're using participles in Latin, we would rather use a different kind of uh, construction. We might use a relative clause. They give the example, who was returning victorious? We might use some type of temporal or causal clause. Um, that is to express a time or a situ situational or causal relationship. So, for example, they give Caesar while he was returning victorious, or then Caesar since he was returning victorious. You know, um, they give victorious there, but victor is actually a noun, so it would be literally to say uh, was returning as a victor since he was returning as a victor and do it in that way just as a, as a side note. But the key thing here again is that the literal translation for radians is returning. But it's so common to use that kind of present participle in Latin that we also often want to do who was returning, while he was returning, since he was returning, if he was returning, something like that. So, you know, while, since, because, when, as, um, if, all of those are sort of fair game as options when you're translating a participial phrase like that. Okay. Now, in the second example that they give, um, we have a perfect passive participle. Now, unlike the present participle, which shows the same relative time, so all of their you know clauses they had the was because quipit the main verb was a past tense. So down here with wiktos in our examples, perfect participles show rel relative time that's earlier than the main verb. So the main verb here is fake it, um, made, that's a past tense. Well, how do you get earlier than past tense? You have to use had verbed, okay? In other words, you translate it, if you're making a full clause, as had verbed, okay? So if the, ver uh, the participle means conquered, having been conquered, when you translate it in a clause, you're going to have to say had conquered to make it show earlier time than fake it, which is already past tense. Okay. So going through the examples, eos victos stipendarios fecit. He made, fecit, them, eos, uh, conquered, or having been conquered, stipendarios, subject to tribute. Literally, it's an adjective meaning tribute paying or something like that. So he made them conquered, or he made them having been conquered, tribute paying. Now that's the literal translation. But again here, this is so common in Latin, and it makes perfect sense in Latin, 
It sounds a little bit weird in English. Because it sounds a little bit weird, um, we might want to turn it into a clause. Instead of saying, having been conquered, we might say, after he had conquered them. Or, you know, after they had been conquered. All right? We might say, he made those whom he had conquered. Or, those who had been conquered, subject to tribute. We might say, he conquered them and made them subject to tribute. Okay, so what we're doing there is we are um, taking the participle wiktos and turning it into a verb and then adding and and then doing the main verb after that. The reason we're doing that is in English, by doing it in that sequence, we, we suggest that the conquering happened first and then the made happened later, which is exactly what the tense of the participle wiktos is doing. So all of those, after he had conquered them, whom he had conquered, uh, he conquered them and made them subject. In all of those examples, we are um, we're giving the idea that the conquering happens first and then the making subject to tribute, okay? So that gives us the basic meaning. However, that's not a literal translation. So I want you to to understand the benefit of making a clause like that, which might make it clearer in English, but to be able to understand how to do a literal translation too, if you're asked to do a literal translation, and that's the having been conquered or just conquered. He made them conquered, subject to tribute. He made them having been conquered, subject to tribute. All right, now on to our last example there. Um, oh, wait, we should... There's actually two more examples, so second to the last example. All right, this one, ingressus. Um, the reason they threw this one in there is because the perfect um, participle is usually passive, the PPP, perfect passive participle. But if you have a deponent verb, uh, and they give the example here with ingressus, that comes from ingredior. Deponent verbs have an R on the end of the O in the first form, so instead of ending in O like amo or dokeo, you get a form like ingredior. Okay, now ingredior, morior, conor, these are all deponent verbs. So ingredior means to go into or walk into. And ingressus comes from the last principal part of that verb. Uh, and this is a perfect participle, but since it's a deponent verb, the idea of deponent verbs is that they look passive, but they translate active. So ingressus looks like it's a passive participle, but we translate it active. So instead of having been entered, we have to say having entered. So looking at that, Caesar vacuum urbem ingressus dictatorem se fecit. Caesar, having entered an empty city, made himself dictator. Now that is the literal translation. So uh, just imagine if you were going to do that with a who clause, a relative clause. Think to yourself how you would do that. Okay, so what you should have said would be something like who had entered the empty city um, because the main verb fake it is past tense. So just like an example up above, we have to show earlier time. So that's the had verb, Caesar who had entered the empty city. Uh, now let's try it. Why don't you try with um, a while or an if or a since or something like that, whatever makes sense to you here. All right, so um, here are the different possibilities. Caesar, if he had entered the empty city, made himself dictator. Mm, doesn't make all that much sense. Caesar, while he had entered the empty city, made himself dictator. Mm, a little closer, maybe. Caesar, as he had entered the empty city, made himself dictator. I like that. That's pretty good. Caesar, um, when he had entered the empty city, made himself dictator. That's kind of my preference here. Um, since or because you could probably get away with, but I don't think we have a causal relationship here. So anyhow, um, basically this is just up to each person, but you want to make it try to sound right in English. So when he had entered the empty city sounds right to me, and maybe you prefer one of the others. Um, but as long as it can make sense in English um, and be right in the context, you're good. Okay, now our actual last example. This is the future active participle. Again, 
this is the urus type, the long u, and then the r is noting that this is future. Our word future actually comes from futurus, a future active participle. This is going to mean about to or going to do something or intending to do something. So, example, Caesar contra Pompeium pugnaturus copias paravit. Caesar going to fight against Pompey, prepared troops. Uh, about to fight against Pompey, prepared tr troops. Okay? Now, knowing that, and knowing that it's a future participle that indicates later relative time, we're starting from a past tense main verb, parawit, prepared. So, going later than that, we can say something like, Caesar, who was going to fight against Pompey, Caesar, who was intending to fight against Pompey, Caesar, who was about to fight against Pompey, okay, those are the who clause, the relative clause. Then we could also do something with a causal clause, a temporal clause, or a conditional clause. If Caesar was intending to fight against Pompey, he prepared his troops. Since or because Caesar was intending to fight against Pompey, or was about to fight against Pompey, he prepared his troops. Or when Caesar was intending to fight against Pompey, as Caesar was intending to fight against Pompey, he prepared his troops. Okay, well, I hope that this uh, audio lesson on participles has helped out and that you would be able to take a literal translation and change it into um, a less literal translation that might make it fancier and easier to understand in English. Um, but I hope that you're also able to just keep the regular literal translation if you need to. Gracias.